Okay, so part B of question number eight from um, June 2017, M1 IAL paper. Part B says, um, suppose now that the coefficient of friction between Q and the table is mu, and uh, when Q is released, it remains at rest. Find the smallest possible value of mu. So mu is no longer um, a half, okay? In this new situation that we have here, um, when P is released, or oh, sorry, when Q is released, the system remains at rest. So we want to find the smallest possible value of mu. Now we know that F equals mu R. All right, and oh, that's F max equals mu R, the maximum possible friction that can be reached. Okay, so basically, what they're trying to say is that when it's released, it doesn't move. That means the frictional force is greater than the, the tension. That means, or oh, sorry, not greater than, that means the frictional force is, is big enough to oppose the tension. So the frictional force is equal to the tension. Okay, and if you keep increasing the tension, the frictional force will keep increasing, okay, and it will keep increasing until it reaches its maximum value. Okay, once it goes above that, once the tension increases so that it's more than the f maximum possible value of the friction, then it will start moving. So you want to find the value of mu, okay, when F max is reached. So we need to find the mu when F max is reached, when the limiting friction is reached. That's what we want to find, okay? And the system is, not, is going to be at rest. That means it's in equilibrium. That means there's no acceleration. So if we consider particle P, okay, so we can say that acceleration is equal to zero, okay? So if we consider particle P, okay, and look at the forces acting upon particle P, we can see that 2mg times sine alpha minus T is equal to zero. There's no acceleration. MA is zero. Okay, so we can work out what T is from that. Okay, from this we can work out what T is. We can say, okay, that means T is equal to two times mg times sine alpha, which was three fifths. Okay, so that gives you six over five mg. That's the tension. Okay, uh, we need to find the value of mu. So we know that the tension here is six over five. Mg, okay, in this new situation. Now, we know that that must be the same as a friction. Okay, the friction must equal 6 over 5 Mg because this is an equilibrium. Okay, so we can say now, if you consider particle Q, friction must equal the tension. So friction must equal 6 over 5 Mg. Okay, and we know that F max has been reached because we're looking at the limiting, the maximum possible friction that could be reached. So use as you know, so it's reached that maximum point. So F max is equal to mu r. Okay, and we can see from Q, if we resolve vertically at Q, let's just move this down a bit. If I resolve vertically, the reaction force at Q is equal to this is the reaction at Q. The reaction force at Q is equal to um, mg, okay, because it's not moving at that point. Okay, so we can say now that F max is equal to mu times mg. So we can now use this equation. We can say, okay, mu mg is equal to 6 over 5 mg. Mg is cancelled. So mu is equal to, let me make that a bit neater. It's a bit of a weird symbol there, doesn't it? Mu is equal to 6 over 5, which is like 1.2, okay? It's 1.2. All right, so there we have our value of mu, okay? If mu is going to be 1.2. Why? Because this thing is at rest. It's not moving. But F max has been reached. Okay, it's a limiting value. So there we have the answer to part B of the same question, and that's question number 8 finished.